morning, church. My name is Evelyn. This is my husband, Joe. And this is our daughter, Jolyn. And this is going to be her story that I'm going to tell. Our daughter, Jolyn, had always been a happy, smart, energetic, and very healthy child. But in 2015, in January, just shortly after her fourth birthday, she couldn't wake up for school. It was unusual because even when she had the flu, she was still very playful and very happy. That day, something was just different. So instead of rushing her to school that morning, we rushed her to the emergency room. The doctor rudely dismissed all of her symptoms and said she just had a cold. So we took her home thinking she just needed a rest. A few hours passed and she hadn't moved at all. When I tried to wake her, she was unresponsive. I yelled and begged for her to wake up. And when she finally opened her eyes, they were pointing in opposite directions. That's when we knew something was terribly wrong. We tried to get her up and she couldn't stand or walk. Jolene was just getting worse by the minute. She started convulsing and getting seizures, and we immediately rushed her to a different hospital. When we arrived, the nurse just took one look at her and ordered a CT scan stat. The wait for them to take Jolene for the scan seemed like an eternity. And I remember holding her in my arms, and she was still unresponsive. And she felt so lifeless. They finally took Jolene for scans. And just minutes after they were done, the doctor came in. He had tears in his eyes. And he said, we found a brain tumor. It's the size of a golf ball. It was blocking the fluid from leaving her brain, which was causing her seizures and she needed to be flown immediately to Corpus Christi so she can have an emergency brain surgery. They recommended that we call the family to say our goodbyes. And a priest came in to baptize Jolene because they didn't think she was gonna make it. But we kept our faith and we said, God has the last word. We knew those medical records were subject to change and we only believed in the report of our Lord. We all prayed around Jolene and asked God for healing and to spare her life. When Jolene landed at Driscoll Hospital, shortly after she entered the ICU, she stopped breathing. The nurses had to force my husband to leave so that way they could resuscitate her. And then they placed her on life support. The doctor said that she tried to die on him, but by a miracle, she pulled through. The very next morning, Jolene had a seven hour brain surgery and it left her in a vegetable state. It was like somebody pressed reset on her brain and she had to learn how to do everything all over again. She showed no emotion, she couldn't talk, she couldn't eat, move her arms nor her legs. She couldn't even move her eyes, so we didn't even know if she could recognize us. A good friend of mine has shared Jolene's picture and her story on social media and it went viral. People all over the world started praying for her immediately. There is power in prayer. Jolene was diagnosed with stage four brain cancer and the doctors told us that she'd never be the same again if she survived. They also said that the chemo treatments alone would leave her with permanent complications, but we refused to accept that. We knew our God is much greater. Jolene would wake up screaming and crying for hours in the middle of the night and all we could do was just hold her and pray. 
Months later, while Jolene was going through chemo, doctors were shocked at her progress. They said that she was the only patient that was gaining weight and asked us, what are you doing? And we tell them, it's the power of prayer. Jolene went from bed bound to wheelchair to a walker. And now look at her. All the doctors say what you're thinking, that she's a walking miracle. In Isaiah 53, 5, it says, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. It has been four years since then and every scan that she gets, they've all shown no evidence of disease. And I want everybody, I want everybody to remember that the devil is a liar and he will try to take your faith, your hope, your happiness, but we serve a mighty God. And when he intervenes, he will show everybody his miracles because he is the God of miracles.